All right, I know everybody's been waiting on this video and I'm really excited because this is something that it's really been a lot of work to get to. And I'm gonna show you the new update for Pipser for the MT5 version. I'm really excited because there's a couple new features that really wouldn't work on MT4 in the way it works on MT5. So I wanna show you from the chart so that way you get the concept of what I'm doing and what the software is doing to where you can be more in control, even in situations where you're stuck in a couple trades of one pair. Uh, you won't have to worry about being just stuck when you could be making money. That's what MT5 Pip Surfer is gonna address. So as you know, Pip Surfer trades with the trend. So it'll look for like a pullback within the trend and enter a trade. Pull back within the trade, enter a trade. And I'll just keep doing that. Let's just say Pip Surfer. Let me see if I can find an arrow. Here we go. Enters a trade here. And don't worry about it being on the four hour chart. It's just for like visualization purposes. But let's say it enters a trade here. Normally, you know, it's a downtrend. Market's been trending down. But maybe Pip Surfer tries to squeeze in one more sale too late. And you get, you know, uh, the market to go against you in that trade. So as Pip Surfer, even the MT5 Pip Surfer will do, you'll get a second trade here. And let's actually change this to red for sales. Let's duplicate it. You'll get a second trade, a third trade here. So let me just make it to where you can see all three trades. Something like this, where you have first trade, you have a second trade. And let's say, you know, that pullback wasn't enough to close out the trade. What Pip Surfer will do, and you can choose how many levels uh, you want to happen before this feature kicks in is that pip surfer will begin to scalp a hedge in the direction that the market is going in so while the market is going against you it'll also be making profit so let's just say you know this is a buy it'll take so a scalp maybe 10 15 pips you can uh, decide how many pips you want it to scalp at a time as soon as that trade ends, if the market is still in the opposite trend, it's going to auto enter another trade. You know, it's going to close the first trade and auto enter another trade. And what it end up happening is it'll make money even as the market is going against you. So that's uh, this one trade close. It's two trades of profit, three trades of profit, four trades of profit. You know, meanwhile, yes, the other side is still moving or where you would get that sale. It doesn't stop. It doesn't stop from doing the um, sales unless you decide with the level uh, limiter to stop the trading on the other side. It'll still enter that. But. As long as the market's going against you on the original trade, the scalping trade is going to make money for you. So you're putting yourself in a situation where you're still making money while you're waiting on the market to reverse. And that's going to keep happening. Now, remember, the way the hedging works is when the trade enters to take profit, it closes it out and it'll re enter the trade. Uh, to continue scalping in the direction that the market's going. When the market changes course, even after the hedge starts hedging, then the market, the hedge trade, like say it goes back into a sell trend, the hedge trade won't continue to buy because it'll only do the hedge if the opposite direction from your original trade is the trend. So your original trade was in a downtrend for a sale. Um, the market reverses, go is in an uptrend for a buy. 
that's the hedge is only going to take the buy. So when the market starts to balance itself back out and go back down, and Pip Surfer realizes that the trend has changed, it's not going to keep entering buys. Only if the trend continue, goes back into a buy, it'll enter the hedge buys. So that way, it allows Pip Surfer to just focus on the original trend that it entered on to get the cost averaging from there. So that's what makes it really, really powerful is because you don't have to worry about one trading a whole lot of pairs at once because you're waiting on a, a trade to balance out and finish and close out. You can allow Pip Surfer to uh, trade the other direction with a strategy that's meant to be a hedge strategy. So let's take a look at Pip Surfer itself. So it's going to look relatively the same. This is MT5 Pip Surfer. It's going to look the same from what you're used to. You're going to have the pause, the close buys, close sales. But the setting is going to be a little bit different. You'll recognize a lot of it. A lot of it was brought over. So Pip Surfer has everything that the MT4 version has with the strategy optimizations, um, with the risk tolerance that you set, the advanced risk management here. But here's the difference. It's the hedging. So I'm going to go through the hedging strategy settings. So first, you get to choose if you want to even hedge in the first place. True will allow the hedge to start whenever the levels, um, the Pip Surfer gets to a certain amount of levels with the original trade. Original trade being the trend-based trades from strategy one through four. Stop hedging if main sequence is closed. That setting basically means that when the market goes back, like say you have a downtrend, so going back, going back to here, say the market reverses and does something like this. It reverses down and it reverses enough to where the sales can close. Say you have like a, because you can have multiple hedge trades. So say you had a hedge trade up here, right there market reverses without like it doesn't hit the take profit of the first hedge trade the market reverses back into the original trend the hedge itself can open multiple levels if you want it to so the hedge trade can open a second level here so you have two you have level one hedge trade you have level two hedge trade if the market continues down and is enough to close out the original trade, the close all means it will close out the hedge trades for a slight loss. So that way you're not, you know, now in a situation where you can uh, be having the hedge trade stack up against you. Now, in that situation, if it does happen, say you have it turned off and the hedge trades still remain open even after the original trades have closed out what could happen is that as the trend goes back into a downtrend and then starts to trigger another sale another original sale it will open that trade even with the hedge trade from the previous sequence so that way you can begin to catch the trend going this way now, mathematically, usually when that reverse happens and then the pullback happens, the hedge trades will cost average out into a profit. And then the original sale, one through four, whichever one you pick, uh, trade, will trade down with the current, with the trend that is in. So that way, it's, Pip Surfer is now surfing the tide of the market it's truly surfing whether the tide is up the tide is down it has a strategy for both sides and you're always in a position for the most part to be in, in an opportunity to enter in the trade that's going with the trend that's what makes that powerful 
So that's what the stop hedging if main sequence is closed. The hedge will take a small loss if the main sequence comes back as a profit. So that way it evens out and you're not stuck in stuck in the trade and you get a fresh start. The starting level means after you know so the first the first trade in the sequence is level 0. Like the original trade is level 0. What starting level 3 means is that three more trades after the original trade like say uh, the market's moving against the original trade and pip surfer is doing the leveling on the fourth entry is when pip surfer will also start to hedge in the direction that the market is starting is going on now you can leave it at three you could be more aggressive and put it at one um you know i, I like three and two um if you want to be conservative with the hedging, I would do four, uh, just depending on your appetite. But two just means after the third trade opens, so you have level zero, which say we stick with the sales. You have a first sale, second sale, and a third sale. After the third sale opens, then Pip Surfer, if the market is still going in the opposite direction of the original uh, entry, it'll start to hedge. Now. Here's where you can really play with things when it comes to the hedging. You can choose the starting lot size. So a, a mindset you can have is that you can make the starting lot size equal the sum of the trades that you're in. So for example, if you if your first trade is 0.01, so I can illustrate this back on the charts. If the first trade is 0 0.01, so let's go here, 0 0.1. The second trade, 0 0.2. Third trade is 0 0.3. And then the hedge opens. You can make, you know, a mindset you may can do is that you can make the starting lot size you know, either the sum, so that would make this, um, the st you can make the starting lot size 0 0.06 for the hedge. And you can get to choose this, like you can do this in real time. Or you can say something like, well, I'm going to go in the middle, like I'm going to do, like you got 0 0.02 for, I mean 6 if you do the sum. You can choose to do like go in the middle and make the starting lot size 0 0.03. So that's like whatever the last trade is. So the last trade of the original 0 0.03, you could make the starting lot size 0 0.03. That way the first hedge trade will have enough volume to really balance out the losses or the drawdown. It's not loss yet because it's just drawdown. The drawdown that you're um, incurring from the original trade sequence. So say you're in multiple trades, the hedge is designed to either uh, mitigate the losses or give you like profits along the way, even if you do like a more conservative starting lot size. You can play with that. Um, you can go as conservative, as aggressive you want. That's why I made the starting lot size something that you can edit. So that way you can have more control over how much from a volume standpoint you want to hedge against the original trade if you're in a drawdown situation. So it gives you flexibility to make decisions about how you uh, minimize your losses or get profits while you're in drawdown. So the hedge range. It's basically say if the market moves against the hedge strategy without the uh, take profit being triggered, this is the range of pips that you can set where the next level will come um, will come out. So basically meaning that just like the original trade, you could have a level one hedge, you could have a level two hedge, you could have a level three hedge, and what I did is a fixed rate for the range, just to keep it simple. Um, so you can do it 10, 
depending on what you're trading. If you're doing a more volatile pair, you can do like 25 or even something similar, like say you're doing a tier three pair, maybe you can do 30, uh, whatever you want to do. This is based off of you know, what you want to do. Maybe you want to be more aggressive on the hedge than you are with the original trade strategy. Depends on what you like. Hedge lot multiplier, the hedge, you can have a multiplying effect for the, um, for the pair. You know, I have it at 1.5. Um, you can be a little bit more conservative and do like maybe like 1.3. The hedge trade really isn't designed to have, from a mathematical standpoint, the hedge trade isn't really going to have a lot of instances where you're in a um, four or five different trades for a hedge. You may have two or three, but you know, it'd be rare when you hit four or five because remember the original trade was with the trend. The hedge is designed for the initial reversal. Very soon after an initial reversal, there's a rebalancing, meaning that after you have going back to the chart, say you have, you know, the market going down. So you have the market going down and then it goes back up, has an initial reversal. Usually there's like a little balancing where it'll go back down one more time before actually establishing the new trend. So that's why the hedge trades, you know, you're not going to really have a lot of instances where you are in a large hedge trade for a long period of time because that's just how the markets usually behave. Um, so that takes care of that. You can set the take profits and then you can also connect the hedge strategies. So, so the entries, you can make it to where they'll cost average or you can make it to where they have individual take profits. So if you have true, they'll cost average. They'll look at the other hedge entries and cost average between them for profit if there's multiple entries. Or if you make it false, it won't think about the other hedge trades. It'll only look for its own 10 pips profit if you have it at 10 pips. And then you can make a stop loss for the hedge trade. If you have it at zero, uh, there's no stop loss for the hedge trade. So more risk management uh, from a hedging perspective. So hopefully this makes sense. Um, MT5 pip surfer is going to be out pretty soon. And I hope you're excited for it just like I'm excited for it. If you have any questions, just DM me, um, but I'm really looking forward to this upgrade.